Three magic lakes surround the town of Boyle and add beauty to the mountains, Kish, Corran, Brickleave and the Curlews. And the three lakes are Key, Arrow and Gara. On the shores of Loch Gara, near the town of Balahadrina, John Surlis has his home and shop. A man now in his seventies and with a long family history to be proud of and a kindly face, a great love for children in his heart and for his own place and people. <laughs> Never happier than here at home in Monastradon, with his wife Bridget, his son John Jr., his daughter-in-law Bridie, and his own grandchildren and neighbours' children, playing all around him. John Surlis is not only a merchant and head of a happy home, he follows a craft that has been in his family for 400 years, certainly distinctly traceable for six generations. The Surlis men were coopers, a craft that, except in certain specialist places, has almost vanished in our time. From Cooperage, they branched out into other skilled styles of woodworking, for wood was their life. To the woods of the MacDermot of Coolavin, a famous name, a house always hospitable to harpers and poets to find the raw material for his craft. John Surlis looks at the trees with a friendly but carefully examining eye. It's hard to get good native timber nowadays, he'll tell you. Once there was plenty of it, and people would even ask you to oblige them to cut down a tree that might be dangerously near to the house. The thing then was to make everything from living wood that you could make. Today it's left standing too long, rot and woodworm get in. Timbers this way, when you start to cut it, it's the same as yourself, alive and breathing. And when you cut it, it's not dead. It's dead when it just decays like a biscuit. While it's in the house, and no matter what you use it for, it's alive. When John Surlis's father started work, there was no local mill for sawing. All the timber had to be cut by hand with a saw called the frame saw, which was operated by two men, one standing in a pit underneath the timber, the other above. The saw only made to cut on the down stroke. Michael Dwyer and his brother Mark own the sawmill in Boyle. We have a few pieces of timber that has suit me. 
Oh, yes, we have some nice ash. Yeah. Yes, well, nice, that's what I wanted. Ash, yeah. yeah. They'd be suitable now for old turf barrows, some of them with the bins in them, you know what I mean? Wouldn't they? That's oh, it. oh that yes. Now, that uh, one now wouldn't be suitable yes. for a turf barrow. The, the legs old... of the barrows, yes. yes. Do you make large shafts too? I do, yes. Yeah. Well, some of them top portions they do. The ones there? Yes. Yeah, I see. Do you make any riddles, Mr. Sarlis? No, I didn't make any in a good way. In years? Yeah, in years. Ah, I see. Yeah. Uh, well, there yes. was an old man down the way here that used to make them, you know. Yes, I remember used seeing to him. Specialise in that uh, yes. sort of thing, you know. But oh, oh, this old garment, like he used to, I used to hear way back that he used to put the cut the log of ash to the length, you know. Yes. And um, clipped it with a clifter, you know. Yes. And uh, however he used to do it, and he used to used to cut them out, not to saw them at all, you know. No saw now. No, no saw. No. That's the way he yes. used to do it, you know. All from October came, he was getting them ready for November for the oats, for riddling the oats. Yes. Well, I'm, it, I'm too old now for beetling the timber for to yeah. take the stripes off for making the oh, riddle. Oh, I see. You see, you lifted it up with a, a chisel. Yeah. And you pulled the strip, the whole end. I see. And there was no plane and no more, only put the bottom in the riddle. When Peter the Great began to build ships, there were few sawmills in Russia. But the shipwrights, men from the forests, had great skill with the axe. Using an abs for blocking, John Surlis will say, before there was ever a saw or a mill, that's how it was done. Sixty-six years ago, he says, the circular saw, working on water power, came to boil. The three-legged stool will sit on high ground or low ground, and that the milking could be mighty helpful if the cow turned frisky. That was before the milking machine. The machine needs no stool. But this four-legged stool, a local Sligo style for the hearth or for the milking, seems to be a great favourite, as it takes shape under his hands. The holes for the legs are drilled with an auger. For strength and security, they're drilled at an angle. The seat is trimmed with a hand axe or hatchet. And now you can see with what skill Peter the Great's men in their time and many other men since time began trimmed wood. From Battle Bridge on the Upper Shannon close to Leitrim village and the last remnants of the fortress of O'Rourke of Breffney, the grandfather of John Surlis moved and married in Clun Lu, a mile from Drumboylan Church. He had three sons and three daughters. Another brother came with him. They brought their craft and their style with them. Here comes the most interesting animal I've encountered in a long time. Last seen by me in the workshop of Joe McLaughlin, the last craftsman cooper in Oma Town. It's the cooper's grey mare. Known by that name, John Surlis says, and in several languages, of course, all over Europe. That vice is as old as the Middle Ages. In comfort and control, the craftsman sits and plies his spokeshave. My father married, John says, when he was 20 and eventually came to live at Fallings, not far from Balahadrin. When he was 14, John took the place of his elder brother Bill, who had gone to the United States of America and went, you might say, to the woods to follow the ancestral craft. John himself had two sons and three daughters and now has 18 grandchildren his great pride, for he delights to be among children. His own family, as he puts it, spread out to make a living. He himself was eight years in the States, from 1925 to 33, 
managed a store for a Clare man who was in a big way of business in chain stores, a fleet of trucks, a racetrack at Tarrytown on the Hudson and more besides. But who went bust? The years are significant. The depression was there. The log is expertly split with the beetle and cleaver to break out the legs for the stool. That is why John likes ash, for it splits cleanly and evenly. John came home from the States and built a house and shop and went back to the woods. But the chief reason for his coming home, and he tells it with laughter in his voice, was because of a lady who was a school teacher in the famous school at Tony Brack. The school that Mr. James Dillon described, and he wasn't slighting it, as the Bog College. To Tony Brack, scholars came from far and near and stayed in the houses with the local people. It was as famous as the schools of Munster in the days of William Charlton's poor scholar. John Surlis married that lady teacher from Tony Brack, Bridget Mann. The legs are finished with a draw knife. The tools are few and simple, saw, chisel, auger, hatchet, spokeshave. He still has a set of Cooper's tools in use and the draw knife is one of them. The diameter is checked with a wooden gauge, but he says easily that his work in wood is now for him more of a hobby than anything else. Green timber is easier to work and is handy for pig troughs, harrows and handles, but the superior work is done from well-seasoned timber and proper seasoning is a lengthy and all-important work. The legs are fitted in and hammered home. Deal seasons itself and you can work ash with only a third of the sap out. Some woods can do with three or four years seasoning. The planks, the way you stack them, separated for air. The waste ends are sawn off. The legs steadied with wedges of their own substance. Not a nail anywhere to be seen. And there's the finished article, as steady on its feet as a strong farmer. Vincent Cochran, the postman, stops for a chat. 
Morning, Mr. Solis. Oh, I'm not Hello, bad. Oh, it is a lovely day, thank God. Oh, well, I, 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 I got a letter for you. I, it might be a check. It does look so like one, look like one from the guards. You get them tired. Hello, Mr. Solis. It's young Declan's job to feed the chickens. Pick them all now. John Surlis is still a very active man. When he was younger, he helped to fell many's the tree with a cross cut, a two man saw. If the tree was a big one, a rope was attached to each handle. And with two men aside, it took only 25 to 30 minutes to fail the largest tree. We'll soon have all the big ones too. The miniature chairs are replicas of full-sized chairs that John makes. His fingers are never idle, as handy with the penknife as the spokeshift. Ursula likes nothing better than to put the chairs on the shelves in the shop. Little chairs for leprechauns. Baskets and straddles for their donkeys. Even hurley sticks. And Terry Madden drops in. Fine. Fine. That's a nice evening. It's wonderful. Great. It was a good day. Fine. You got your all your hair today? Finished. Yeah. Got finished. And I got the turf done as well. Very good. So, I'm flying now. Yeah. No problem. You can sit down now. I the can sit down for the winter, is right. But I'm going to do a little bit of mowing, so oh, I'll yes. put my grass board off you anyway. Yeah, very good. A good one now, a little less. Yeah. That's the best one. Good one. And uh, I want to pick one of those as well. Yeah. Try them, right? Go ahead. You pick one for me because. Can you trust me? Might as well trust you. I trust you up to now, so. <laughs> well, that's the best one now. And when you're picking a rod again, I always pick the heavy one. And you're getting the first lint of what I call the butt of the tree. Fine, that's fine. And no way. matter what handle you buy, I always get weight in it. Same thing? Yeah, same thing. That won't break anyway, no. That looks a perfect That's one. not a branch. That's not a branch. It's a, it's a good one, that is. Yeah. That's, that's grand. Uh, and, uh, I'll have some sugar as well, off if yeah, you please. There you, go. you have a sweet tooth? Yeah, I have a sweet tooth. Uh, it's not great for the weight, but however, I'm still going to have it anyway. And uh, you can give me a 20 major as well, please. Very good. To soothe the nerve. That's good for the nerve. You can charge those up from it. Very good. That's fine. Yeah. When my grandfather came from Leitrim, John Surlis will tell you, the chair got its name. He brought a traditional local style with him from one county to another, at a time when every townland had its own fashion, a way before standardization and mass production. He's talking of the Leitrim chair, the product of his craft that has brought him international fame and brought specimens of his work to the National Museum. He ships the seat with the hand axe,
marks the holes for the back rungs of the chair drills with the auger and he marks out the back wrist. With this chair, John Surlis captured in Canada a most prestigious international award, the World's Craft Council Award. At an exhibition held in Toronto in 1974, among 500 exhibits and exhibitors from 57 countries. Dr. Muriel Gann of the Craft Council of Ireland was responsible for encouraging him to enter the competition. According to John, anything that had been done for craft, it was Miss Gann did it, and she did everything she could. And quietly proud of his own achievement and of the tradition behind it, he'll say like a true artist, anything I'd make would be better the next time. And I suppose that's how I got the prize. He works with his grandson Kieran, who possesses a little Cooper's grey mare all on his own. Kieran, he feels, may follow him in the craft. Like green fingers, these skills and interests can, people say, jump a generation. Are you going to bother again today? I don't think so. In a phone. You must work too hard yesterday. Did you? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I must have been high. <laughs> I must have been dry now. Mm. But I think you would rather help them than help us. Mm. Did you? When he learned the craft, the firkins were still being made for the transport and export of butter. Fine oak firkins hooped with wood of a lesser breed, 56 pounds to the firkin. And the dealer used to test the butter with an instrument that went right to the bottom. A firkin, when you can find one, is now an antique. American oak came in box, five feet long, easy to split, a straight grain using mallet and cleaver, simpler than a saw. Hoop iron came from Belgium to make hoops for the churns, but hoops could also be made from sally rods. Good oak gave no tack, no unwanted flavour to the butter. He made horse and donkey harrows, five box and five holes in each box, 25 iron pins, and all the drilling that required, and the bar and swingle. His father and himself could make three or four in a day. They made their last one about 1940. Outside the shop, the craft work is on display. Ladders and hay ropes, loy shafts and pig troughs. Barrels whose bands are carefully tested. The almost forgotten craft of the cooper. That's all right. It's okay, that will pass. A donkey straddle. A donkey now is almost as rare as the craft of the cooper. But straddles of this sort made the labour of the little animal so much easier. And here's a fine family rocking chair. Oh. 
A genuine dog cart, if ever there was such a thing. Outside the shop and around the house, the children play. <laughs> By the shore of one of the three beautiful lakes of Boyle, the heart and head and hands of a dedicated craftsman have created a miniature wonderland for the children. Such, such were the joys when we all girls and boys in the springtime were seen on the echoing green. <laughs> <laughs>